In this video, I want to introduce the fundamental concept of uh, Lie derivative. So I will go straight to the point, but uh, this topic is actually something that should be covered in more, just, in more than just one lecture. In this case, I want to introduce the basic concepts, which are important to understand uh, what's coming uh, after this, but uh, we will not uh, cover everything about uh, this uh, important uh, topic, as I said. So I'm going to define first the Lie derivative, then we will do some calculations, but what uh, will really, really matter here is um, the physical insight behind this uh, operator, this derivative, which is an operator of the following kind. So I will denote it like this, with, with uh, this L, and then I will put a subscript V that we will understand uh, uh, gradually. It is related to a certain vector field, V. L stands for Li, and it is an operator acting on a certain field, or a certain, let's say, tensor. So we have a tensor, and in particular, I will write the definition for a covariant tensor. So we have a field U, and uh, you, you, you just have to think of this as a, as a, as a um, tensor. So let's call it tensor. We have a tensor with a subscript mu. So it's covariant because this is a subscript, but you could also define it with the superscripts or uh, other subscripts. So you can have a, a generic tensor here. But we will be interested in uh, this kind of object. So a, a covariant tensor of first rank. It's defined like this. We have a limit with a certain parameter lambda going to zero, and we will understand uh, this parameter together with uh, this vector field uh, V. But first, let me write down the expression. Here I have U tilde. So I will also explain what this tilde means. It's not too complicated. Mu of uh, X nu. So this means that this is a function of x1, x2, dot, 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 uh, all the possible variables xn that define um, your uh, manifold, your space. And then we subtract the same u, u mu, without the tilde calculated at this, uh, the same point x nu. And then we divide by lambda and we let lambda go to zero. Now, let me explain, and we will explain this tilde, this lambda, and this v. Let's start from the tilde. So the tilde means that uh, we are considering a small transformation. In general, we are considering a transformation from the space defined by a certain variable that we can call y, y mu, to Another set of variables labeled like this with x mu. So here we are considering uh, the x, uh, x mu variables. And in general, there is a certain coordinate transformation that uh, will allow you to write a tensor from uh, the set of coordinates um, labeled by y to the set of coordinates labeled by x. So for a covariant tensor of first rank, we can write something like this. U tilde alpha of the coordinates y, so I can write y mu or simply y, for example, without writing the, the superscripts, it's the same. And then here I have the derivative of uh, the coordinate x mu with respect to y alpha, and then I have u mu of x. So this is how you change from the x-coordinates to the y-coordinates, for example. But you can also rewrite this as u mu of x equal to derivative of y alpha with respect to x mu. Then you have u tilde alpha of y. Here we have a certain coordinate transformation. If we know the, the law, for example, y of x, the coordinates y that depend on x. And for the sake of convenience, we can assume that 
this is a, an invertible law, so we can write y of x or x of y if you invert uh, the, this law here, this map. And in particular, we will consider an infinitesimal transformation. So we go from x, uh, we go from y mu to x mu in the following way. So x mu is equal to y mu plus lambda v mu. So this is where lambda comes in. It's a parameter that we will let, so we will um, assume that it will go to zero. It's this parameter here in the limit, whereas this v is exactly this uh, v mu here. So we are considering a vector field v mu. It's as if we are basically moving along the vector v mu because you can see that uh, we change from y mu to x mu in the direction given by v mu. Simple as that. So this is how you can interpret this. And this is also how you can uh, interpret this derivative. So basically, we are not really changing the argument of the function, but we are changing this field with the simple uh, infinitesimal transformation. So this is the interpretation. And we can say more about this, but I mean, it's not uh, possible to describe all the details in just a few minutes um, of this video. Uh, but now what I want to do is I want to take this limit and therefore, I want to find a formula, a different formula for this uh, lead derivative that we will use. So we will start from this, from this formula here. And we want to manipulate it by using this transformation for the field. Or in particular, if you take a look at the inverse, you can uh, consider this transformation here. So let's consider this transformation here. What I want to do is I want to take this derivative by uh, reminding, reminding ourselves that this is the transformation, right? So we can write y mu or y alpha as uh, x alpha minus uh, lambda v alpha. So we take the derivative with respect to x mu of this. And what we get is basically a Kronecker delta alpha mu. So when you take the derivative of this with respect to x mu, this is what you get. And then we have minus lambda. So lambda is just a, a scalar that does not depend on the, on the variables. We let it go to zero, but it does not depend on the variable x. And then here we have uh, the derivative with respect to x mu that we can simply label like this. So we, we have d mu v alpha like this. And uh, then uh, I have um, u tilde alpha. That depends in this case on y. So it's written with respect to, to y, right? And now at this point, I can uh, substitute this expression in here. So let me put an equal sign there. This is equal to, now I'm not going to write the limit, but you have to assume that lambda goes to zero. So it's a small quantity. We have uh, u tilde mu of x nu minus, then I have delta alpha mu minus d mu v alpha. And I also have to multiply this by lambda. U tilde alpha of y. So if you want, I can write y nu. And then I divide by lambda. Now I can multiply this term by delta alpha mu and also by this. So I have u tilde mu of x nu minus u tilde mu of y nu plus d mu v alpha times u tilde alpha of y nu times lambda. 
and then we divide by lambda. So I can divide this by lambda, and I can also cancel this lambda here. I can simplify it with the lambda at the denominator. So this is what you can write. And we can also rewrite this expression here and also this expression here because y nu can be related to x uh, nu with this law. They are very close to each other because lambda goes to zero. So you can expand this expression. So we will have a u tilde sub alpha of x nu, and then you have higher order terms that depend on lambda. So you have uh, something of the order of lambda and uh, higher order terms. When you let lambda go to zero, this will go to zero, right? Similarly, you can expand this one as well here. So we can rewrite this. So this is equal to u tilde mu of x nu. But in this case, we also need a, a first order term because otherwise, if you just uh, simply put this there, you will have this minus this, which, give you, which uh, gives you zero. And uh, you are losing the other important terms. In particular, the important term here is the one proportional to lambda. So you have something that uh, is proportional to lambda divided by lambda, which will give you the result of the limit. And then you have higher order terms, lambda squared and lambda cubed. So they are proportional to lambda squared, lambda cubed, and so on. And they will go to zero, even if you divide them by lambda, once you let lambda go to zero. So we need to write another term there. In particular, we have, uh, so remember that y nu is equal to x nu. And then we also have minus lambda v nu, where uh, remember that lambda is small. So we can write the subsequent term like this. We have minus lambda. And then we have v alpha derivative with respect to x alpha. So I write d alpha. And then I have u tilde mu of x nu, like this. And then you have higher order terms that are not important. So we can rewrite this in the following fashion. We have um, V alpha, D alpha, U tilde mu of X nu plus, and then we have um, D mu V alpha multiplied by U tilde alpha of X nu. So this is the result of the limit. And uh, it is the result of uh, the uh, application of this lead derivative operator to the tensor field u mu. And in particular, I want to show you something more. So if you replace this partial derivatives operator, with uh, the covariant derivatives, d alpha, and the covariant derivative um, del mu, let's call it del mu, you can show that you get exactly the same result. So I can do it in a, a few steps. It's uh, very simple because uh, these covariant derivatives will give you terms that are proportional to the um, connection to the Christoffel symbols. So this, this is a covariant derivative acting on uh, this tensor field. We give you this. We have V alpha, then I have the partial derivative D alpha, U tilde mu, and then you have uh, minus V alpha, Christoffel symbol, gamma, alpha mu, U tilde gamma, plus d mu v alpha u tilde alpha plus here we have a plus because this is a, a contravariant vector here so you have to take the 
covariant derivative of a contravariant quantity, and if you remember the transformation law, we have a plus for the Christoffel symbol. Whereas here, when we take the covariant derivative of a, a covariant uh, quantity, you get minus. So we have plus gamma alpha mu gamma, lowercase gamma, v gamma u tilde alpha. And now you can check quite easily with uh, just the dummy indices that this will cancel this. You can uh, relabel the dummy indices in such a way that you can show basically that these two terms will cancel. Also, using the property that this Christoffel symbol is symmetric with respect to these two indices here. So it's quite easy to show this. And this proves also the covariant behavior of the lead derivative, because you can see here that these partial derivatives can be replaced by covariant derivatives. So we get a covariant expression because it transforms like a tensor, basically. And I want to write the final formula like this. So we have uh, the lead derivative along the field V of a certain quantity that we can call omega mu. So this is a covariant quantity, a covariant tensor. This is equal to V, V nu, del nu, omega mu, plus del mu, V nu, and then we have omega nu. So this is the formula for a covariant tensor. But you can try to generalize this to other types of tensors by means of the definition that we gave at the beginning of this lecture. Now, this expression can also be rewritten more abstractly in the following way. So we have the lead derivative so I'm going to use the notation of uh, differential forms. In particular, we act with the lead derivative on a certain differential form, omega, and this is equal to, one can show that this is equal to the inner product operator that it will denote like this, inner product operator. So uh, I'm also putting this subscript by, um, I mean, this subscript simply reminds us that uh, the inner product is taken along the vector field uh, V. And then I have the exterior derivative acting on the um, differential form omega. So here we take the inner product basically with this exterior derivative operator, just like you can see here. The inner product is taken between this derivative and the vector field. Then we have the exterior derivative acting on the inner product acting on omega, which is the form. So this is another way to rewrite the same thing. And uh, it is more abstract and it makes use of a uh, notation that can be understood uh, from uh, differential forms. But anyway, you can see here that the, the lead derivative helps us define a derivative in a manifold in a coordinate independent manner. And you can understand that from the covariance of uh, this operator. And it provides us with a more natural way of dealing with tensors in a manifold. And we will use this concept when we rewrite the action of general relativity.